Hi, my name's Steve Hodgden from Modern Asset Management. Um, uh, here to sit down and have a chat with some folks tonight about uh, real estate and notes and uh, gonna take a peek at some of the things that I've been doing and some things that I've been, been thinking about. Um, so let me uh, share a screen, let me get rid of that. Um, well, since I've got this up, uh, you guys can see an email for an update that I got it from Roofstock. Um, I've been looking at Roofstock as uh, as kind of a benchmark for what market price is on uh, rental homes. So I'll get rid of that. Um, let's see. I'll winnow down my screens down to uh, down <laughs> down to uh, what makes sense here. Let me go do another share. Uh, This is, that's a PDF I've got. All righty. Um, we'll start, work, start first, like those of you who may not have come through the meetup group, um, if you're looking for me, um, you can find me under this title, Real Estate and Mortgage Investing Online Edition. <coughs> been doing this for I don't know uh, half a dozen times I think now I was doing a meetup uh, here in uh, Marin County and frankly it was hard to get a quorum and I find that uh, this has been this has been better for uh, for me and for others uh, to do it online um, but anyway that little scene and if uh, somebody could just uh, either send a chat or uh, raise a hand that you can uh, see that um, make sure we have my screen that everybody can see. Uh, what do I got here? I got a chat hand. Yay, thank you, David. Ah, David's going to be my partner tonight. Uh, my partner in all of this, Nick Curry, is in Tijuana working with a client that we have in the unsecured lending space. And we're investigating uh, playing in the Mexican real estate market. So anybody who's got any feedback with, uh, with that, uh, we're considering uh, partnering with a uh, doctor's group to build an outpatient uh, recovery center, an outpatient surgery recovery center, kind of a little motel for clients to go down, patients to go down there for bariatric uh, bypass surgery, and they need to overnight a couple of days before coming back to uh, uh, the States. Uh, let's see. I got to let, oh. And I just let Wesley in. Wesley, good to see you again. Um, but uh, so anyway, so you can find me at uh, real estate uh, uh, and mortgage investing. Now I'm going to go through the things that I was uh, that that I've been thinking about. Um, that's awesome. Let me start there. Let's start um, roofstock. Uh, we started talking about. I started with talking about roofstock. Um, I'm having a. I'm, going to be 62 in a couple of weeks and every now and then I have this idea that I shouldn't be quite so active I should be more passive and uh, the reason that I'm so active uh, in real estate and notes is one I just like to be busy but secondarily or maybe primary is I think that I can beat the market um, that has not always been the case but I think I can um, what I have found though is typically I can, I can, by active involvement, improve something, you know, maybe 30%. Um, I can't control lots of, lots of things, but I, I've got enough experience that I can help people make better decisions. Um, this, is, uh, this is a website called Roofstock. If I was going to go just passive and uh, want to go real estate shopping from, uh, from my computer, this might be a site that I would use. I've never bought anything here. I met the developers a few years ago at a uh, <coughs> at a trade show, and they really I feel they're really on to something. They give you all the things that you'd want to do for kicking the tires and due diligence uh, uh, in the digital world, and they let you look for stuff like cap rates. They let you look for particular markets. Um, one of the things that if we decide to really gen up what we're doing in Florida right now, we've got uh, we've got eight projects uh, um, going. 
at some phase of beginning, middle, and end there. And if we decided we wanted to really start to build a real estate uh, flipping business, uh, making some turnkeys, this is probably where I would go to sell them. And they do this lovely thing where you can come in and you can say, you know, I want to spend a certain amount of money. I want properties that have an average price. I like my average monthly rent to be like that. Oh, not 1750, we'll go here. I like my average rents to be a thousand dollars and I want to look in all markets, I guess. And oh, won't let me do it. But anyway, let's try it a different way. Let's reset. Let's say that I want to play just in Indiana. You should let me search. Yeah, I can apply. Oh, gotta let somebody in. Gotta let Bettina in. Hi, Bettina. Nice to see you. Um, long time. It's my my fault for not picking up the phone to say hi. So this is Roofstock, and I said if I wanted to go big into Indianapolis, this would be a, this would be might be a way to do it. Um, you can buy a whole portfolio. You can buy a piece of a portfolio, and it was just it's a I think a something that's well better. For me, in terms of uh, data, than you get from um, looking at stuff, you know, broker by broker, blind bids, you know, whatever, whatever, foreclosure, lit, foreclosure dot, dot com. Um, so, um, so I was thinking as I you know go through this debate with myself of should I be more passive and being an income investor, um, I liked uh, the look of Yield, Yield Street, one of the many crowdfunding um, sites. And Yield Street has a section just called Hard Money Loans. And in here, I put this one up for example. This is a 12 to 18 month loan at 9% interest. Um, according to their summary, um, you've got, uh, let's, what have you got? You've got their financing, um, 11 million, uh, their, no, they're financing. 4.9 million of it, while the uh, prime, uh, the primary lender, the construction lender, is funding 11.1 uh, million. Um, and so it says here they may have an option to participate in an additional nine and a half, uh, um, which as as it is drawn down over the next 12 months. So it's if they're making their interest payments, it's an opportunity to go lever up some more money. Um, and Yale Street investors get receive monthly interest. Um, what attracts me to this kind of thing is it's typically bigger projects than, uh, than I can certainly handle my own. And, uh, and it's just, it's, I'm not, uh, oh, somebody needs to come back in. It's not just, uh, um, it's also learning for me, you know, at some point do I wanna put together my own syndication to buy something? And that's part of what I'm gonna talk about. Um, so. Passive or not passive, uh, passive or active. Um, here's a passive investment that I made. Um, this is a company called Fayer Manka, um, and they've uh, been around a long time, uh, I think nearly 30 years, uh, doing uh, uh, apartment complex uh, uh, rehab and uh, uh, renovation and uh, then sell. Their typical hold is about 10 years. Uh, depending on depending on the market uh, depending on market timing, and <laughs> they had a um, I'm going to jump off to Housing Wire because this is I love it when I find something that says oh you knew what you were doing because that doesn't happen every day. Um, Housing Wire just had an article out today about what is the leading uh, market uh, uh, area uh, in real estate appreciation, and we go down to the list. And here it is. It's Seattle now, um, and Bremerton and Olympia. This is the top three are basically Microsoft, right? And then the next one is Google, and then number five is uh, 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 Tesla, and number six is Tesla. I think uh, number five, Carson City, probably has a bunch of Google or Amazon. It's got an Amazon center in. Um, and you just keep working your way down. 
Um, but anyway, so here I am, and I made this investment with Theramanka on the uh, on the, the um, help I had with a dear friend who's been in the real estate space for 30 years. And uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I put $100,000 of my kids' money, their trust money, in this. And it's, like I said, it's a 10-year hold. And uh, it did two things. Uh, it distributed $3,200 in the first year. Oh, I have somebody pop it up in the chat. Can you post a housing article? Oh, yeah. Somebody wants to know if I can post a housing wire article. Let's go quick do that. Control C. Control V. Look at that. All righty. Um, so anyway, I jump into this. How I jump into this. Uh, um, this deal. Um, he put. Uh, I think he put ten times as much in this project as I did. He's a uh, he's a much bigger player than me. Um, but anyway, their year end distribution was thirty two hundred dollars, and um, so. This, this is bringing me, to jump ahead, this is bringing me back to active buy and hold. Um, not only did we receive a small 3% three, 3 re, uh, return, um, I also, I need to change screens, and the trust received a K-1 that had an $8,000, um, had an $8,000 negative. Um, so, um, not only did the trust earn three thousand uh, dollars passively, it also has now eight thousand dollars in uh, that go go against other uh, other income that's in that portfolio, um, which is lovely and uh, that came close to using up. Uh, I think it came close to using up all the uh, income offset. There was very little tax paid in that uh, paid in that trust then this uh, past year. Um, but this reminded, reminds me that when I was doing lots of rentals, this was what my tax return looked like. I'd lose money and take home cash. Yay. So, um, so I'm what I think I'm getting pulled back to that, which is probably uh, a sign that we've, uh, that we're hitting the top of the market because in 2000, uh, in 2006, when I went all in in a shopping center, in 2009, I was you know, two and a half million dollars upside down. Um, some of you have heard that before, but I paid uh, basically four and a half million dollars for a shopping center. Um, two years later, it was worth uh, it was worth two million, and I hung in and uh, uh, fought my way fought my way back. Um, exited that property property at a five and a half million dollar number, something like that. Um, 5.2 and came away with uh, came away came away with a with a windfall after nine years work um, but only a uh, seven percent uh, annualized return so anyway um, I got to stop telling that story because I should scare people away from real estate don't be scared by real estate don't be scared by notes either um, so um, what do I want to show you I want to show you I'm going to go back to the uh, Theramanka screen. I just left. Um, because I didn't get through all my tabs. Um, so let's see. I showed you Yield Street. I show you Theramanka, uh, which takes accredited investors. Um, it's super, super folks. Um, again, I'm not pitching anybody. Uh, that's me. Oh, I'm pi I am pitching me. And um, another article out of this week's uh, Housing Wire <laughs> that tells me that maybe we're getting uh, a little, uh, little out there in the edge is remember we had the CFPB that was out there fining banks billions of dollars for shoving terrible loans down the throats of un unsuspecting consumers. Um, so they created this False Claims Act in the Obama administration that allowed them to just do whatever they wanted to pull money back. Um, it was, frankly, just the drop in the bucket of uh, you know compared to how much how many billions they made. Um, but what that did is that nobody, none of the big boys do FHA lending. So here we are, the FHA commissioner saying that well, we're just not going to pursue this anymore. 
you guys can come back and do play your dirty tricks in the marketplace um, to uh, just to keep the uh, keep the balloon inflated. And so here we are. Um, points me back to you know I want to be quick, I want to be nimble, and I want to hold stuff that cash flows. Um, I'll put this link out there too. Um, yeah, if you guys, uh, I like Housing Wire. I get the daily feed. Um, I'm not a. Uh, uh, it's one of the one of the few things I. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I do read on a, a fairly regular basis. So let's get that out there too. Uh, you can make your own opinions. Um, so that's I wanted to tell you that I'm thinking about. Uh, being passive, and then I immediately switch the uh, uh, flip the switch to I think I should have uh, some buy and holds, um, or at least maybe start doing some master leasing in Florida where we're uh, where we're getting a stronger and stronger uh, uh, set of experience. Um, now, here we go. This is uh, I'm going to walk through a deal that uh, that I uh, that I passed on. Um, just to show you what I uh, what I've been thinking about, I was approached to be a partner in a group to buy this a forty unit apartment complex, garden apartment style complex in Marysville, and I know Marysville well. I had an office in Yuba City for about ten years. Marysville is just south of Reading, between Sacramento and uh, and Reading. Um, needs a complete renovation. Needs uh, needs everything, everything, everything. Um, it's got terrible occupancy. It's uh, it's a it's a tough spot. So, and that's really why I passed on it because this is super active. Um, so <coughs> we can look at uh, we can go, I like to look at Trulia. I like to look at rentometer. And so um, foreclosure.com was uh, kind of scary up there, um, but uh, I must have a filter in that's uh, locking stuff. Oh, there's one act, one active auction. Um, what scared me off of this property is I like to follow the buy a D or a C property in a C or a B neighborhood. And so here it is. It's on a really busy uh, four lane road. This is really close to the military base that's up there. Um, here's your neighbor across the street. That ain't so hot. Here's your neighbor down the block. I got gas stations. I got some boarded up stuff. I got this. Um, whoops, let me let somebody else in. All right, letting somebody else in on the call. Um, I've got uh, I've got junk next door. Um, like I said, here's I got a liquor store right adjacent to my property. Um, if this is what I want, if I showed you behind it. There's a very large uh, mobile home park with mostly uh, 60s, 70s, 80s uh, product in it, um, which tells me that this is, and I already knew this, this is the bad part of uh, the Yuba City, Marysville uh, area. And this is, you know, this is the, I can't, I can't rescue this. I can't make this pretty enough to uh, raise rents and fill it up in full. Um, so it was, uh, it was, it was too much. It was too much for me. But this is, if you showed me this in, in a neighborhood of, um, of uh, near, uh, near some better apartment buildings or near some uh, active uh, retail or some kind of uh, economic driver, a hospital, a school, um, anything, anything, um, we would have taken this down um, because it's close enough for me to get my hands on. Again, back to trying not to keep trying to be passive, and I can't do it. Um, but it's uh, it would have, uh, you know, it's probably a project that's going to make the right guy some money. 
And I think the right guy has got to have a contractor uh, attached to him, a commercial contractor attached to him in Yuba City. And uh, that's, like I said, I'm 20 years ago, maybe, <laughs> but, uh, but not today. Um, so that was that. Um, what do I want to do? So what have I talked about? I've talked about uh, um, taking my hands off, getting my hands dirty, finding that that was too dirty. And, uh, and that one of the things that's doing well for me is, uh, is, is a truly passive investment. But that still doesn't convince me to be passive. Um, this is available for anybody that wants to send me a, a request. Um, this is a really simple um, uh, offer price calculator uh, from a friend of mine um, that I've been using off and on. Um, the, uh, let somebody else in. Hi, Locus. Um, the, uh, oh, and a blinking chat request. Um, so the question is, is do I, um, was it, was it a deal, uh, with a group? No, it was, it was a deal with a couple of other guys, um, a guy that I'm in, um, in another property with, um, we've gotten along really well. We've been the, uh, as it, we're part of a group of I think 12 investors in a big deal, big, big mansion down in Bel Air. And he's been the most vociferous, uh, complaining guy. And, I've been well. I'm I'm pretty darn direct too. So we we we've, we've established a we've established a, a bit of a friendship, um, and it's just I'm this may be this may be dead. It may be gone already. Um, I could still get sucked into it, um, but uh, it's uh, not only if, for no other reason as I really like the guy who's part of it, and it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a huge amount of money to play in play in with this. Um, but it just seems seems to me that it's just it's too too tall of a hill to climb. Um, I think I can probably find uh, smaller hills that have faster turnaround. Um, one of the things I've found is that I, I like in and out. I, I like to, I like to, I like velocity of money. Um, I really like, I really like rent payments. I really like note payments. Um, and I like short term notes. Um, my favorite note lately was one I wrote a few months back uh, for seven years to, a. uh, to a contractor who then turned into be an owner occupant, uh, not a contractor, he was a handyman, turned into be an owner occupant and he's uh, um, house hacking a little tiny uh, crappy house in Pensacola um, and he's cash flowing it and he's paying me $500, paying an HSA, a health savings account, $500 a month, um, which is, uh, which isn't, isn't bad on a, that investment was all in sixteen thousand um, dollars. We returned thirty three thousand over time, unless I sell it earlier. Um, so anyway, this is a good little calculator. If folks uh, were looking for that. Um, I have a, uh, I've got a, a YouTube page uh, called Steve Hodgden that all of these are uh, on. There's also I've also got a library uh, in Dropbox of uh, materials I've gathered uh, over the last uh, three or four years of different gurus and books and things about, uh, about real estate. Um, so let's get rid of this. Um, and I'd sure like at this point to, uh, open the floor to, uh, to questions. You can unmute your microphone or you can raise your hand in the chat. Um, if you'd like, um, and let's, let's kick a few ideas around. Hey Steve, this is David. Hey David. Hey, uh, so you were saying that you were starting to uh, to work with properties in Florida, and I just happened to attend a a session with Bruce Norris yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. You know his his what to do in 2018 sort of deal. Yeah. And he was yeah. mentioning that he was in Florida also. Oh, what what are you seeing there? What, what what's drawing you to Florida? He went. He went. I mean, geez, he, well, yeah, I've, I've been following him for a long time. I think he's phenomenal. Um, and I didn't know that he had dumped all of his California inventory except the office building they work out of. That's all, that's, he's, that's all he's got left. And he took it all to Florida. He bought some, he bought a couple of development projects that had uh, died. 
Uh, so he bought some lots and is developing those. He bought, he bought, he bought, 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 bought. Um, he denied that primarily, rumor, by the way. Primarily, I think he's primarily in the Tampa, Clearwater part of the uh, part of the state, mid-state Gulf side. Um, I've got, uh, I've got, I've done uh, three fix and flips to seller finance in Pensacola, which is uh, on the Panhandle, right up against Mobile, right on the right on the right, literally a block away from Alabama. Um, I've done one, two, three for financing lots for a developer. Um, I've built uh, two houses from the ground up um, and we're in the middle of a large, um, uh, well, a 2,500 square foot on the water uh, property in a gated community. So I've tested the bottom end at $50,000 and this, the last house I just said will probably be an exit at about 750,000. So these are not the buy and hold that you were talking about. Well, and so I'm. So if I'm going to go to Florida, I'm going to do buy and hold. I think I'm going to specifically go to Gulf Breeze, <laughs> which is what I'm enamored <laughs> with right now. Gulf Breeze, which is a suburb uh, uh, right across the bridge from Pensacola, and I think I would focus. It's they're getting a lot of building there. I'd focus on '90s construct, '90s, 2000 construction stuff that uh, has decent uh, decent infrastructure. And is just and is dated, um, and do you know do lipstick flips, um, but flip to uh, but but potentially do holds um, for better ones. Um, I'm enamored. Uh, I I used to. It, I guess nobody knows really my whole history because we couldn't we go on forever. I ran a property management business for a couple of years, um, actually uh, in Marysville uh, uh, for a little while, but then in. Uh, then I bought a business down in Palm Springs in the middle of the collapse. But uh, I did a couple of years of commercial property management, vacation rentals, that kind of stuff. Um, and so I, I'm familiar with how that, how that works. And I've got good people on the ground so I can direct and not actually have to be the guy with the flashlight and the batteries and you know the plunger in the middle of the night. Um, because I've, I've done that. Um, but I like, uh, I like Pensacola. Uh, Florida itself has had, this goes, speaks to macro trends. Florida over the last decade has had a 30% increase in population. And that's not just senior citizens from New Jersey. Um, it's having a huge migration from lots of the mid South, uh, a lot from Atlanta. Um, the house, well, I did a seminar, I did a webinar a few months back about a house that we bought the dirt, built the house and sold it inside of five months. And we sold it to a lawyer in um, out of uh, someplace north of New Orleans, and he was migrating his practice to uh, to Pensacola, and because it was just a nicer place to live. And that was just that was they bought that house before the drywall was up. It was, uh, it, was it was it was one of my first first deals there, and I haven't been able to do that well since, of course. Um, so. Um, but there's lots of parts of Florida. The downside downside in Florida as a as a landlord is property taxes. They're about three and a half, three and a quarter, three and a half percent, depending on where you are, um, because there's no state income tax. And apparently, the uh, it takes it can take up to four years to evict someone. No, close on someone. No, to no. foreclose on someone. No, no, not no? anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you take us back to 2010. Um, the world comes to a comes to a screeching halt. Florida real estate drops by half. The government can't possibly figure out what to do with it and do with it in that amount of time. So they put in these stopgap rules to uh, to uh, help the homeowner stay until they uh, stay until they get um, they they can get a handle on what's going on. So they put all these delays in, and yes, you could go four years. You now, even though it's a judicial state, you can get in and out in a year, um, or you can structure your note as uh, in different ways so that you can um, so that you can avoid the whole property ownership and just treat it as treat it as an eviction. An eviction in Florida is fast; it's ninety days. Um, taking somebody's property rights is another is another story. 
Um, the law, the case law there is if you've been on a contract for deed, on a, a land contract for two years and you've paid down, I think it's like 10% of the note um, or some dollar amount, you now have some equi equitable interest in the property. Um, but you can structure these things in different ways. If I'm going to do a hold, if I'm going to do a hold or I'm going to buy a, buy a house outright and finance it or, you know, and then hold it as a rental, um, it doesn't matter because I've got a rental tenant. Um, it's the seller finance ones that are a problem. I just had a loan. Um, Bettina's on the call and Bettina almost bought this note from me. Um, I was going to sell it. Uh, I was going to sell it and I, and it wound up going to somebody else. Bettina, I've already bought it back. Okay, <laughs> this was um, <laughs> this was the little guy on Lincoln. Right, it was a uh, uh, fifty thousand dollar fifty fifty thousand dollar mortgage. He had been in as a renter and hadn't missed a rent, hadn't missed a payment in twenty six months. I sell him the house on seller finance. In the third month, his father dies in Alabama. His wife leaves him. He packs up and moves home to his mother. Right. So, and then we can't find him, right? So we can't find him for like a period of a couple of weeks. I used to own collection agencies. I know how to skip peep, skip trace people. It was really easy to find his wife because she had a Facebook, Facebook uh, uh, profile where she was, you know, complaining about getting, you know, about, about her husband. So, and so um, got the, we got them uh, in to do a quick claim. Uh, we gave them, uh, I felt that they should have a little walking away money. I think we gave them each $300 uh, for coming in and signing paperwork. Um, they, we took, we took, they gave us keys. They gave us, they, uh, Philip gave me the key, gave, gave my guy the keys on the way out of town. He says, I got to go. We'll figure it out later. Um, it took $4,000 to put the house back together. Um, we had some, we had some work to do and some improvements to make in the air conditioning. We swapped out some windows, I think. Um, my basis in the property right now is $26,000, somewhere 25 or 26,000. And I have a new tenant in paying rent at $650 a month. Wow. That's fantastic. Right. So you look at that number and you go, okay, that makes sense. But when you deal in the sub 75, 80, $90,000 properties, there's always this noise. It just, it just is. And if you're, uh, if you're energetic, it's great. Um, if you want to just go to the golf course, it's not the right stuff. You know, so I'm, uh, so as I go looking for, uh, p potentially we're exploring building a more stable rental pool and maybe have returns be in the mid, mid to high teens, um, <laughs> in, in a better neighborhood, um, that becomes a much more hands-off property. Uh, set of properties and and it fits the supposed passive uh, lifestyle that my children want for me um, you know I, I I've I've written what have I written I've written 400 unsecured medical loans this year um, apparently I'm <laughs> apparently I don't want to stop you know it's uh, I consider work a game and it's the game that you know, business is the game that I'm best at I'm too old to play basketball anymore. So, so, um, so that's why I like Florida. 30% improvement, uh, uh, increase in population. Um, the downsides are they've got poor um, education demographics. They've got a not so hot workforce. Um, and so they don't have a whole lot of tech there. They've got some light, man they've got some mid and light manufacturing. They've got lots of schools. So I can see myself doing, uh, uh, um, short long-term uh, housing for uh, like traveling nurses, doctors. Um, uh, I, I had a rental one time that I had a link to um, uh, a master's program. And there is nobody that, you know, if you have a master's student and as one of your renters, there's, you couldn't tell they were there. There's no wear and tear at all. It's just there because all they're doing is studying. Um, the traveling, I had a client and when I was on this vacation rental business in the desert, when the world just collapsed, he didn't even notice because he had three traveling nurses in each of his three bedroom houses paying like a paying, paying what the mortgage payment was each. 
you know, so he was, and those, and those folks come to town and they work doubles and all they do is sleep. Um, you know, so, you know, so there's, I think I want to go play more with leverage. We're trying to, trying to build better cash flow. I think, I think, I don't know. Speaking of nurses, he brought up, uh, Bruce brought up an interesting point that I hadn't considered in Florida. He was talking about how the population is, is aging. And as, as people age, they require more medical um, support mm -hmm. than they do at younger ages. So it's bringing in all of these medical professionals who are typically well-paid, good credit scores and, and so on into the state to support someone who may have needed two people to support them at 70 and now need five or six people That's to right. support them at 80 or 85. My side project, these are lead sheets that I was working on today for doctors groups in Florida to arrange financing for things like hip replacements and uh, uh, stuff like that. Um, and we're working at growing, we're working at growing the unsecured portfolio uh, in that area. Um, it's just, it's the, everybody's getting, it's getting more crowded everywhere, right? Um, the, 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 not downside, but the, it takes some of the kind of like Florida Gold Coast um, away. All these folks that are coming in to take care of the seniors who are notoriously cheap, who are um, underinsured through Medicare, um, requires that these workers come that'll work for, well, currently the Florida minimum wage, I think is seven and a quarter. Um, so how, what kind of renter do you get on an $8 an hour, uh, uh, paycheck, right? So you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to have, um, uh, you're not going to get that lawyer every time to buy that house. You know, you're going to take a, I'm going to take a house from the nineties, outfit it. Um, I'm going to outfit it with three bed, you know, three full bedrooms, you know, all furnished and rent it out for half again what my carry costs are. Yeah. And, so, and, uh, and there's this current backlash in the, in the world on, um, on, in the United States on people um, um, the whole immigration thing, you know, and it's just, it's, you know, I don't know. Oh. Oh, so David and I are talking. Anybody else want to talk? Cuz I can show you I can show you something else. Well, uh Yvette here, first time hey, caller. I feel like I'm calling into a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as you can see, the spare bedroom is not a radio station. <laughs> yeah, you need a better mic. <laughs> oh, do I? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Just, you can have Oh, you do have a radio station mic. Yeah, yeah that's great. Radio station mic. That's great. Um, so I'm curious as to, you talked uh, a lot about development and it sounds like equity deals. I'm, I'm curious as to, you know, if you're into multifamily, single family uh, notes at this point. Yeah, um, I've got a portfolio now of about 25, um, mostly small mortgages. Um, I bought, <laughs> about two years ago, I bought 26 loans in one batch from a uh, fund out of Arizona. And that were all subprime loan modifications. And uh, that portfolio has been paying my bills for uh, the last couple of years. Um, it's returned um, a low teens, uh, low teens yield to 12, 13, depending on the time of day. You, you look at it, what happened in a month. Of those 26, I sold a couple. Um, I've got three um, working through some kind of foreclosure right now. Um, and the rest are the rest are paying good enough. Some of them are paying completely on time, never missed. Um, uh, Bettina, who's on the call, um, bought one. Uh, is that lady paying you? And so, um, but uh, yes. so, yeah, is she good? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we everything's back on track. Yep. Oh, good, good. Um, the uh, the subprime borrower. Uh, is a subprime borrower. Stuff happens and they can't pay from time to time. Um, typically, I'm collecting 11 out of 12 payments over a year. Um, like I said most of them have a coupon of about 10%. Um, my 
very first note was a $13,000 bit of chaos that I bought uh, through a broker in Southern California. Uh, there's a long, long post on Bigger Pockets that I've written about it. Um, I decided rather than go pay a guru, I'd go throw some money in the wind and see what happened. Um, that borrower who had been dark for, geez, more than a year, um, is paying me 200 and change a month on a $25,000 note. Uh, I basically sold him the house that he lost to foreclosure. I sold it back to him. Um, um, well, that was that was my beginning test. Um, what I like most um, are seller finance pa is seller finance paper um, because I get to I get to understand the property inside and out. All of these uh, all of these rentals that I have, all of these mortgages that I have um, are uh, are problematic um, because there's there's you know there's something well not all there's something wrong with them there's something wrong. The inside of the house always looks like the mortgage payments. If they're paying the mortgage on time, then they're paying, then they're taking care of their property. Um, so I have. That makes sense. Yeah, I have. Now that we're talking about him, I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to open up a new window and show you a foreclosure that was supposed to happen today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the mortgages you were talking about in in. Those figures, it sounds like they might be seconds or? Uh, no, they're all, I, I decided, um, I used to own collection agencies um, mm -hmm. and I decided I didn't want to be in the pure collection business again. Um, I probably should have gone into seconds. Um, I, uh, well, I've got experience collecting seconds uh, and uh, no, lots of experience. I, you know, I started as a debt collector in 1980. Um, I've owned collection. I own collection agencies for 20 years. Um, the uh, I'm going to take a look at. Um, so I bought this. I bought a note. Here's here's uh, here's what happens with you want to you want me to tell my story about it first. About yeah, go for it. Yeah. All right, let's Absolutely. do this. Uh, let's go back and share. Where's my share? Let's see. I'm going to share a screen. All right. Um, so this is a borrower who has been in a fight for years to stay in a property. Um, I should have read the collection notes better. I should have seen. I should have seen that my sweet talk was not going to convince this guy um, of anything. He was. Uh, he's. He's in a fight to the death. Um, so this is an older picture. This is whenever you look at something on Google Maps, always take a look at the at when the image is. Um, so this is four years old. But I know this house uh, because I've had people on site send me pictures. I've used uh, go see me, go see for me. Um, to go take pictures for me. Um, this borrower on this street is what, one of the things I like. It's a small. It's the smallest house on the block, right? Um, so it should have good value, right? Neighborhood looks good. Um, he has an extension cord running from this house to this house right now. He has, uh, I get abatement notices for weeds uh, once a month, and then he goes out and cuts the grass. He's been, been fighting to stay and has not made a mortgage payment here for two years. I bought the loan as a pre-foreclosure for, I think, $78,000. I've spent, uh, I, in a good faith effort, when I was trying to, uh, uh, when I thought that I had a chance to rewrite his loan, I put eight thousand dollars into home repairs. He had had a he had had some sort of I forget electrical or water problem, and he had uh, the insurance company sent the money to me, or sent the money to our servicer rather than to him. So his contractor, his service master, service master was who it was, um, was howling looking for their money. So I released it, and I shouldn't have. Because as soon as I released it, he stopped being cooperative. Now, I've been collecting bills for, again, 38 years. 
I should know better, right? <laughs> so, but anyway, I got, so I spent 78, spent another eight. I'm probably eight thousand, five to $8,000 in attorney's fees as he has put up every fight that you can. He filed a CFPB, CFPB complaint against me. He tried to go, I mean, it's just, it was, it, it's been, you know, he's doing well, his well, just to stay, you know? What was the discount on the note? Um, the, the UPB that I was given, I'm sorry, no, the UPB was including arrears like 160. So I think my all-in cost against principal was like 60 grand. Um, was, yeah, uh, no, uh, 60% rather. Um, and so it, you know, I, I bought it, I didn't get any special kind of discount. 60, 65% was, was what market is. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, three bed, two bath, 1400 square feet. Um, I think it, uh, I think it sells quick. The, um, it's, uh, you know, it's going to go to, it's, it's going to go to an REO agent. And I'm, no, I'm hoping, well, here, uh, Trulia says it's worth 137. I do not believe that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I get out at 110. Yeah. So a year long fight for me, um, you know, 85, 90,000 in because I made that eight, 90,000 in because I made that $8,000 mistake. Um, I should really be 70,000 in. You know, so I should make, I should have made, I should have made 25 on this, 30 on this, and I'm going to make 15. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, and what's your strategy for growing your note portfolio? Because we're, um, we're actually working on, you know, partnering with, uh, with folks like yourself. And, you know, I know we have at least one other person that loves the space, Bettina. Um, and going into larger portfolios of mortgages, um, and then having several buyers come in by putting it on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So basically the idea is, uh, you're able to diversify and then also have liquidity, but it would be a passive investment, um, as opposed to, you know, you're used to being an active investor. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I think for me, um, I'm drawn back to seller finance. So pick, yeah. picking up uh, and, and what I'm changing my model is I'm stay, I'm moving away from this kind of project and into paying rather. So it seems like a time thing for me. Velocity seems to be become more and more important to me that I'd rather pay up for a property that needs uh, a little work um, or um, not infrastructure, structural work, bad roof, bad plumbing, that kind of thing. Um, we're, um, and then either get it into a seller finance contract on my own, um, or have it go to, or carry a second, uh, on the property. Uh, yeah. But you only know that if, if like you're saying it's seller finance or somehow you get to talk to the bar. Yeah. And that's, and that's the, you know, so I, um, the other th mistake that I think I made, um, again, again, not being apparently unable to be passive. I just can't help myself. <laughs> um, so I got to stop fighting it, um, is I bought, I owned at one point, I owned 33 notes in 12 states and that left me too spread out, too many rules to learn. I had no idea what the uh, right of succession rules were in Louisiana. I know now, hopefully I'll never need to use them again. Uh, they have been, they have a, they have an entirely different legal system. Mm -hmm. And so I had a, I bought a, uh, I bought a uh, probate uh, foreclosure and didn't realize that I had to go. Oh yeah, that's sticky. Yeah, I had to go file a lawsuit against six heirs. I couldn't just take the property back. Oh my God. You know, because, because they said, they said they disputed in open court and said that the debt owed on the property was invalid. And the judge said, okay, because there was nobody there from the lender to say, yes, it is valid. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So um, I would rather stick to um, stuff that's local, local for me uh, in California um, or where I've got really strong, really strong partners on the ground 
and I have that in uh, in outside of Gary, um, Indiana, and in Pensacola, um, yep. where I can so, get. For me, I have to. For me to be. For me, if I can get inside the property, then I know what my repair estimate's going to be. It's like it's like wholesaling. Right? It's just you know, it's like getting you know, I'm going to be a flipper, except I want to. Except I want. I don't want to. There's so many people chasing the junk. You know, I I want to go. I'd rather pay for something. Than, I'd rather shorten my timetable by not needing to, um, you know, do that. Mm -hmm. I think that's all of us. Yeah. Well, if you're interested, we are focusing on California. I think Nevada, Utah, second there, uh, like the second markets we're looking at. Um, and I, I mean, I, it, it sounds I like you know you, what you're doing. Utah, so. Utah is really interesting. I mm -hmm. just did a, we just did a week trip. Um, I had, uh, I had, a, I had a, good reason to uh, take a road trip and we went to uh, we went we went up to we went up to Zion uh, up to National Park and the reason that I wanted to go there is I wanted to go look at St. George. Um, St. George really interests me um, as a um, it's a it's got a it's got a pretty large snowbird uh, population that happens and like I said having operated a collection eight and uh, having operated a property management business in Palm Springs I understand snowbirds, um, and, uh, and again, seniors seniors don't put any wear and tear on property, uh, and so I'm I'm actively starting to look. I've reached out to a couple of wholesalers in the St. George area uh, through through Bigger Pockets again, and uh, and met with one of them as I came flying through uh, came flying through. I was in St. George for three days, and my poor wife's sitting in the car as I'm driving through neighborhoods and I've got my realty guide up and I'm just, you know, just doing what I doing what I do. My, my idea of, uh, of sightseeing is going to neighborhoods like you see, in, like saw in that picture and looking, looking for houses. Yeah. Sounds like a good deal for her. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So you, I think there's, I think there's lots of, well, I think the secondary markets, uh, um, yeah. In, in Utah, I think have, I think I've got plenty of room to run. Um, California, um, it's uh, it comes location, you know, it becomes what neighborhood you're in, right? Um, Nevada, um, Nevada, I'm, I think I do master leasing in uh, in short term master leasing in Las Vegas, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd go buy a, I'm not sure I'd go buy a five thousand square foot house today. Mm -mm. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Is that Patina telling me not to do it? Don't do it. <laughs> well, um, I'll drop my email here. So if any of you guys want to get in touch, yeah, yeah, you're more that. than welcome to. Um, my background is I, I used to work for Fannie Mae. So I was on the oh. education side. I have a tech background. Um, done some deals myself. And then also our partner has, um, you know, been doing it for about five to six years. Um, so this market is just super interesting and um, we're basically looking for people like you guys that know how to find these notes. And if we could put together a portfolio that's really strong, but you don't want to put all of your capital, we're actually reaching out to a lot of investors in China because we're able to raise money through the blockchain tokens from China, which then, you know, is we could inject it to a, a rather large mortgage note portfolio. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, so that's um, what we're thinking about doing. Yeah, um, reach out to me and I'll show you my portfolio. And you know, if you want any of that, well, it's you know, there's always there's a price for everything. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, Locust, a, Locust asked a question. Locust asked a question of 15 minutes ago. I didn't see it. He is. Uh, he asked me, "Do I think unsecured medical debt is the new non-performing second liens?" Um, and uh, uh, Col Stephen Colbert has done a couple of uh, bits. He did a payday loan buyback thing. There's a couple of uh, uh, NGO kind of groups that are helping people buy, uh, you know, cancel debts. Um, I think student loans are the next ne are the next gigantic problem. I don't think it's unsecured medical paper. Um, I collected medical paper so long that it's uh, it's just you know, it's not going away. Um, the new uh, the new rules are structured that people should uh, people should expect their copays and out of pocket expenses to do nothing but continue to climb. Um, the solution for that, uh, for those of us that have a high deductible health plan, is to own an HSA to have a health savings account. 
Um, they're marvelous vehicles because the money goes in tax-free and it comes out tax-free. Um, the, you know, the folks at Congress know that, know they screwed everybody. Um, so they've given us, they've given us a way, uh, a way to protect ourselves and, you know, paying for, paying for our medical care and, uh, pre-tax dollars is the best thing that best that they can do for us. Um, my personal, uh, insurance is a thousand dollars a month, uh, with a $7,000 copay, uh, deductible. So it might basically my health insurance is $18,000 before I get any benefit for it. Um, but that's, that's so I have a health savings account. And so. Gotcha. Um, Steve, thanks for that. I appreciate, yeah. appreciate the answer. Um, sure. if it's okay, if you don't mind, I've got a couple other questions for you. Yeah, dive in. Fantastic. Um, so a tiny bit of background. I'm an architect in Sonoma County um, and have a, have a number of legs on my stool. Um, and I've owned some doors for about 10 years now. Um, and I've been doing some um, realty shares, kind of, you know, loaning out on a 401k. Yeah. Um, own my own business. Um, doing a, between three to 500 a year in that um, and really want to build, you know, build up into a lot of more passive income about what am I 45 or so. Um, so given that I've, I've researched notes, I've researched, um, you know, bridge loaning, um, haven't really gotten into the medical debt side of things but effectively have some capital that I could put forth and I don't know that I want another tenant right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so a couple of things that I've been playing with that I, I wouldn't mind your feedback on is one is um, some land flipping. Um, mm -hmm. we, we bought uh, 20 acres in Placerville this past year and there's a um, California forestry improvement program that I've been part of which uh, pays 90 cents on the dollar to improve your forest. Wow. Um, so we're getting uh, $50,000 worth of fuel load removal and tree trimming and dead standing and all that stuff done. Um, getting about $50,000 of it done and the state pays for um, 90 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, I'm considering sort of continuing that as an opportunity. Um, another opportunity is continue working with wholesalers in Dallas, Texas. It's where I was born and raised. I, I know that market pretty well. Um, or start going a little more locally into California. Um, possibly like, like you've mentioned, sort of doing even land development deals, being an architect, I can, I know how to do that because <laughs> I do it for other people. Right. Um, so given that little bit of background, um, where where may be some sweet spots um you know if if you were in a similar position um with a lot of options and and some capital put in, to put into play um and of course everybody's different but um i'd be interested in to to hear your insights and to um you know continue to diversify buy a note, buy a house, investigate more of this land flipping based on the fact that you can get, you know, 90 cents on the dollar for, I don't know of any, I don't know of any house flipper that's going to get a, the state to pay 90 cents on the dollar for their improvements, yeah. you know? Um, so just curious about your feedback. Well, so to the last first, um, I've been nibbling around the land stuff myself. Like I said, I've done, I financed five, I think it's five lots in Florida, um, but those were all infill. Um, none of them were, uh, none of them were actually raw land. Um, and the, um, that's a, that's, that's certainly, you know, if you're going to be a, you're going to be a land trader, that's, that's full, that, that becomes full-time work or at least full-time outsourced work. Yeah. Um, the you you said your income was substantial and the first thing and this is i can't get this to fly in this house is let's leave california um, <laughs> and she will not go um, you know um i can pay it's fine it's fine that i pay 10 12 percent uh you know like you know so anyway i mean we screwed up we screwed up this year and our uh 
our tax basis was 6%. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not like an Ayn Rand, uh, Atlas Shrugged kind of person, but I've been at this a long time. I paid lots of taxes, and so I'm just trying to balance out the teeter totter. Um, Understood. Yeah, I, I think so, we're I think we're in this between 15 and 17. Yeah, yeah, and so you know, so what what do I do if I've got tw- if I'm 20 years younger than I am now? Um, what are the mistakes that I made? Um, Let's see, I held some stuff too long. I sold some stuff too fast. Um, the idea of tenants building, uh, building equity was, um, well, I've had, I've had several million dollar events in my life. And um, two of them were fueled by having tenants pay down, rapidly pay down mortgages. Um, right. And so the next, the things that I didn't know 20 years ago, um, is I, I didn't have a solo 401k, you know, I, I didn't understand any of that. I had, I had money and I had money in uh, fidelity and it went into the company 401k and everybody got screwed and, you know, made, made 5% and said, yay. Um, you know, I, you know, I just, I just ran, I just ran, a, did a little deal to fund this HSA for, uh, for the missus to try to, you know, show her what I've been doing. We've only been, we've only been married about a year and a half now. And so she still thinks she, she still doesn't know what I do for a living. Um, sure. But I put, I took $4,000 and bought a deeply discounted performing mortgage um, that went into her HSA at a $24,000 balance at 10% interest. You know, so, you know, I quintupled her, I quintupled her money in a tax-free uh, vehicle. Right. So, you know, I, I should be doing one of those a month and I'm not, I'm just too busy chasing stuff. Um, but, uh, um, I would be, I'd be, I'm t- telling to myself, I should be way more interested in tax uh, avoidance. Um, you know, how much of that, how much, how much can I build in depreciation losses? Right. You know, how, how much can I, you know, can I go, could I go buy something that's broken and then expense it out at the new $2,500? What's the new rule? Um, if you buy a refrigerator to put in a rental unit, you get yeah. to rent it all off in the first year. Yeah, you can do 100% first year. Right. So, you know, I'd go, I'd go drive my income down to squat by improving things in that where the flip is inside of a, inside of a Roth. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say playing a trick. I mean, if it's one of those things, if, if you know the, if you know the rules and you know the law, then you can play. No, and, um, they're, and they're written, they're written to, this is the, this is what the government wants us to do. The government wants us to improve real estate for people to rent it, to people to rent. Right. Right. Yeah. So one of the little tricks and, and probably some other people on here know this. And if they don't, um, then it's a, maybe it'll be helpful. Um, so I have two young kids that are my office associates. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they're my 1099ers and I pay them out to clean my office and draw up sidewalk chart, you know, outside of my window to improve my office environment and they water my plants. And so I pay my kids out of my business and then immediately take their funds and put it into their Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. So it's deduction for me tax-free for them, tax-free, you know, the rest of their life. And so little tricks like that, I, I get. And I think while, while playing that game of, of taxes, as you said, like, if, you know, if you were 20 years younger, what would you do different? Um, I think I've kind of, in some ways, understand that portion of it. It's more of, um, if you had 100, 200, 300K to play with, where's, where would you put that money? Well, what, what, am, I, what am I doing today with, with those kind of numbers? Uh, we just funded a, um, a short-term bridge loan for a construction project in, uh, uh, in Southern California. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hang on, let me see if I can find a picture of it um, because this is cool. Um,
let's see and uh, share the screen so i have um i have uh <laughs> 700 in this project right right so there's the developer and this is part of the staging these rolls royces are part of the staging it's, it's like a rap video yeah well jennifer aniston lives down the street this is Beyonce. Beyonce and Jay Z bought the house at the end of the block for ninety-three million dollars. This house has a better view. This is six thousand square feet in Bel Air. I'm getting an eighteen percent return in a short-term loan. Damn. I'm in. The, I'm in. I'm in the money because the house is almost not. The house is. The house has got five point eight million dollars in debt of it, of which seven hundred is me, um, and its exit is going to be seven between seven and a half and eight. This is the rooftop party area. Oh, look! They put a piano in. Um, I thought the kitchen was kind of okay. Um, but you can see through the window here, you can see what the view is out that side. It's out the back. So, so I like, this is, this is an in and out in a year for me, um, at 18%. Um, and like I said, in, in the money, not, not deeply in the money, like 70% loan to value, but, but you know, I'm, we're, we're good. This is, this is Bel Air? Yeah, this is Bel Air. It didn't used to look like that. No, the, the house that was here, the house that was here two years ago was a beautiful little ranch, uh, 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 Spanish style ranch. Yeah, yeah. And, and it bulldozed it and, okay. and put up a 6,000, 6,200 square foot uh, mansion. Gotcha. Right. It's so. interesting because, uh, you know, in my line of work, this is some of what we do. Yeah. Um, is, is this type of stuff. Typically, I, I try to encourage people not to raise houses if they don't have to, because mm -hmm. I'm, I prefer to keep them if I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the whole, the whole neighborhood's getting torn down. Yeah. 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 So here, here in the background, that's uh, Los Angeles in the background, the upper left corner. Yeah. 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 And you know, I wouldn't live in this place. <laughs> it's a party house. It's a party house. Yeah. Now look at the closet. I'd live in the closet. Yeah. Uh, see if I go down. Eventually, I should get to a picture of the pool. Um, yeah, you see the you see the pool here, and it's an, of course one of those infinity pools. And this is on the shaded side of the property that uh, face faces east, and it's an open it's an open canyon below. Um, it's just it's on the top of the ridge, looking you know looking out forever. Yeah, so so. So I like I like this um, as part of what I'm doing. Uh, right. I've got uh, I've got seven figures in unsecured lending because that's what I'm that's what I know. Uh, you know, um, but uh, that turned into that turned that turned into that was just a little side business I was running, and we got good at it. And I took in a partner who's got lots more energy than I do, and we're really running hard there. Um, I'm doing. What else have I got big money in? Um, that uh, um, I showed you the Thayer Monka um, real estate project, the apartment complex. It's 260 units in um, outside of Microsoft in Washington. Um, there, it's a complete uh, uh, rehab, redo every unit, 25-year-old complex, redo every unit, raise the rents from 1,200 to 1,600, and then exit. Um, in 10 years and right. you don't need any money today. You might want some money in 10 or 15 years. Yeah. You know, you know, in the meantime, I'm getting an $8,000 tax credit uh, and we'll be getting, getting, you know, a little bit of money every year. Gotcha. You were speaking about the, you're turned on lately about the, the velocity of money. Yeah. And, um, that's starting to make, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, you, you want a red Corvette, you start seeing red Corvettes. And so <laughs> the velocity of money, it was funny to that today because I was thinking about that exact thing today about, okay, so if there's this, if these funds that are 
that are coming into play in, in my life um, is is my interest more in legacy payments in the future, mm-hmm. or is it is it short term, quick turn, high interest, slightly higher risk type investments to to build right? Yeah. Um, so because you have you know twenty some odd years more experience than I do, you're dealing in a little bit larger space where I'm in the you know moving 100 200 around mm-hmm. kind of thing and so in that velocity of of money idea um the first thing i come to is scaling so when you when you if you've got a hundred thousand dollars to play with are you better off doing ten ten thousand dollar deals or the the 250s you know it's a similar question like of um you know, buying five notes for one to fail and four to be single runs, or do you do two and 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 hope that you got you know a better short term return on just those two? Well, I take that last point because that that's something that one of these things that rankles me is buy five loans because one of them's going to be no good. Whoa, 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 whoa! That's not the plan. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, the plans to buy five loans and have them all be good. Have all of them be good, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, otherwise, then you know, then don't. Um, the uh, the you know, so like you know, I talk out of both sides of my mouth. I'm you know, on one side, I'm saying I'm really working at uh, short-term velocity, and I said most of my cash is in one to two-year uh, investments that are taking lots of active management and staff, and are returning you know, returning double digits. Um, but on the other, on the other side, I need, I'm also looking at what do I, how, when I finally decide I want to stop chasing, what, you know, do I have enough things in place that, you know, that are, that are good enough? And, and I'm not sure that I want, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I want the John Shaw, you know, 30 houses paid for kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that that's right. Although John, if anybody of you follow John, John Schaub's stuff. John's really happy. <laughs> John's, you know, John's got thirty people paying him a thousand dollars a month. I mean, you know, I, yeah, you yeah, know, he's, he's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just, and that's sort of a similar path that I've taken. Like outside of one of my properties, they're all I just paid cash. Like they're all paid for. Yeah. Um, and so, I yeah. So what do you, what do you do? You go at forty five. I go get as I go get as much cheap federal money as I can right now. You know, yeah. maybe maybe borrow them all at you know sixty percent loan to value. You know, I, yeah. When I bought that shopping center, it was at the height. It felt so much like today, right? Everybody was a genius, um, and you know because everything kept going up. And and I spent, you know, like I said I bought a four and a half million dollar investment that turned into two in a year and a half. Yeah. And you know, and so I I'm you know, cautionary of that. And there were so many other ways that I could have done that. You know, I did not, I didn't do it with partners. I did it all, all my own, all my own cash and just, you know, fought the fight all by myself and God, it was hard. Um, I, you know, it, was, it almost took me out. It was really tough for a while. I was feeding that, I was feeding that property a hundred thousand dollars a year just to keep her alive. Holy smokes. I was 80, I was 80% economically vacant. You know, 45,000 square feet of empty. <laughs> You know, yeah. yeah, and so it, so I, you know, so I've, you know, I think I've learned, you know, what, you know, what, what, you know, what are the, what are the big macro trends? You know, if you, you know, Dallas, I mean, you know, Dallas is super, super hot. Yeah. But, but is, you know, do you still have the same, uh, you know, the same migration? Do you still have the same, you know, what, what's the superpowers you've learned from being there long enough? You know, can you go buy a decent, uh, decent little apartment building or buy a piece of a big apartment building. Or, you know. Yeah. That's, that's something I've been kicking around. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it ranges from, you can get an apartment building for, you know, 40 K a door or, or two fifty a door. Yeah. Well, and you know where all the work is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, for sure. So right now I've been dealing more in, in like the, the C plus market. Um, kind of, you know, 65 grand house mm-hmm. that has a, you know, 125 ARV and I put, you know, 20 into it and rent it out for, you know, thousand yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, so if, if you're willing to move, sort of stuff. 
Yeah, if you're willing to move from, you know, like a one and a half or 2% uh, um, rent multi monthly rent multiple, and by that I mean a $100,000 house. Yeah. If it pays two thousand a month, it's a two yeah. percent return or two yeah. you know, a two percent number. Yep. If you you know, I'm as I'm thinking about what do I do to you know have have better clients, you know, better have the um I've changed how I look at tenants. I now you know the tenant's job now is number one job is not to pay me pay me rent. The number one job is to take care of my house. Right. Yep. And to get that, I think I have to move up from, again, like you said, $100,000 property. I think I need to move up to 200000 And it's the market market from Florida to uh, Dallas is about the same price points. Mm -hmm. So if I moved up to mid nine, if I moved up to mid 80s to 90s construction, did a quick uh, kitchen remodel, put in this, that, and the other, spent 10 grand. Um, and then put it, and then put a tenant in there, either in a seller, a, either a tenant to seller finance, or a tenant to uh, long term tenancy. Or I'm going to ex go back and experiment with some uh, uh, some Airbnb style long term business rentals. You know, um, right. and I'm going to go. I'm going to go play with those. I'm going to go buy a couple of couple or two, you know, two two fifty houses, and uh, and try to work the bugs out that way. You know, and but then I'm going to get a you know, I'll call it a two hundred thousand dollar house. So then I'm going to get a I'm going to get a fifteen hundred dollar rent payment. So I'm not going to be hitting my uh, my two percent my one one and a half percent that I'm hitting now. Right. You know, but I but I got a tenant paying a mortgage. I can finance that at you know that eighty. I can get an eighty percent loan to value loan on that, um, and so my cash on cash return is better. And and again, I've got I've got a tenant paying. I got a tenant pay or a tenant or, or a seller finance deal paying down a mortgage. And that's the stuff that, like you said, legacy, I put that in, I put that in one of the trusts or in a, or in a, or in the, uh, the Roth and take it out as it comes. I'm, I'm old enough now that if I make a dollar, if I put a dollar in a Roth and I make a dollar, I could take that dollar out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, so I should really be doing that more, but I'm talking to you today. <laughs> well, and I and I thank you, and I think everybody on this call. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm 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 kidding. I'm have, I. No. It's self. It's it's selfless, and um, and it, it's something not not everybody does, and I and I truly appreciate it. I wish I could be on these calls more, but. Well, what it does. Well, what it does for me, and I I don't. My daughter told me once that I don't do anything that's altruistic. Um, <laughs> Um, what, what I get out of this is, um, I get to hear myself talk and I get to think calmly and quietly about my ideas and I get, I get feedback, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I've got a, you know, I've got a, I've got a medium little size capital stack that I've, you know, God, I've lost millions of dollars being, you know, doing things on my own and I don't want to do that again. So I, it's, it's a team sport. Yeah. Right. It's it's the if you look around the room and you're the smartest one there, you gotta leave. You bet. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. All that stuff. You're in. You you said you're in Sonoma. Yeah, I'm in Sonoma. Um, you, you're in. You were. I'm in. I'm in Navarro. Oh. I'm yeah, in Navarro. yeah, yeah. Um, so. The next on Saturday, the twenty first, Pete Fortunato's doing a class down at uh, down at South City, down at the South, South City Convention Center. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have not heard Pete, it's like two hundred dollars for an eight-hour uh, blow your mind uh, investor explanation. He's been at this for you know forty years, and he's just he's a he's a he's a treasure. Hmm. You know, I'm I'm going to be in Orange County next week, and I'm flying back Friday night so that I can make sure I go see it on Saturday. Go see him. Gotcha. Um, thanks for that insight. I'm probably going to be in Bosserville. <laughs> 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 chopping trees down um there's a um there's a couple of meetups um that um are useful uh for for local for well because you're local yeah. um down in petaluma uh second tuesday of the month yep uh, I was mike, going to that one. okay mike murphy yeah and, mike murphy's deal i was doing that for that one actually and ended up getting some clients from that doing architecture stuff cool like helping cool. other okay. real estate investors do you know do their flips and whatnot just just permit kind of stuff, just quick turn and burn permit work. Um, so I'm trying to get out of that because it's, 
Um, as an architect, I, you know, as much as I'd, I'd love to do your own thing and, you know, I'm just not that ego architect guy. Mm -hmm. And so I just help people get done what they need to get done. And then I go off and do what I want to do. Um, so. Okay. So, so you, you, you'll come draw up my, uh, my ADU that I want to put in this house. I'll add it to the list. I've got so many. ADUs. <laughs> um, but you know, it's a three month wait, you know, can't get, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's not a three month wait. Um, but it is tricky these days. I, I keep telling my wife, she's like, how was your day? And I said, Oh, they just turned the music up louder and took another chair away. Right. <laughs> So, I don't know. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on the ballot when they're talking about, uh, at least Sonoma County, they're talking about moving uh, back market rents for new construction. Mm -hmm. You heard about this? Yeah. Yeah. So, I know a lot of my guys are <clears throat> not happy about that because they're in the midst of projects and they're not sure right. how it's going to go down. Right. So. Back, back, to be, back to being nimble, you know. And so, yeah, yeah build, building an apartment complex, it's going to take you three years and we don't know what the world's going to be in three years. And so, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, so I said, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to keep things moving. And, but, but again, I, I, if I look at, again, I'm 62 looking for things to pay in my bills in 20 years, you know, I should probably hold a couple of larger, larger pieces of, uh, either, you know, bigger projects or better properties just to balance it out. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, I think we're, you know, we're clearly coming to the end of uh, the free money from the fed. So, you know, I think, go, I think go, you'll get it. I think you'll get some now, but uh, well, in, and in your case, you, you now understand trees and land, you know, let's go start making the low ball offers to people that own land that don't, you know? Yeah, that's, it's, it's somewhat I'm thinking about doing since I can take, you know, I can, I can still get, you know, in the, in the 4.25 on properties that I own outright mm -hmm. and have equity mm -hmm. and just go ahead and, and suck that back out. Like you said, do a 60, 70% mm -hmm. um, loan to value on them and then duck that into some land that has been neglected for 30 plus years, have the state pay for 90% of the improvements Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> maybe even do up a little, you know, you, you see occasionally on Redfin or whatever, you'll see these, you know, land available with, you know, pre-approved plans. Yeah. You know, right. Build you your can, dream home. Right. Well, you can, those, you can go, that, you, you know how to do all that. You know how to, you know, get something yeah. replatted and, and, yep. you know, take something and cut it up into, cut it up into small pieces. And yeah. So I don't know. Much rather be in the hammock next <laughs> be in the hammock by the lake reading a book but well and yes. and and i'm work i'm working my way toward the you know the whole digital nomad thing you know i got an office right. in Southern california i'm working from here out of the house i just spent a week in utah um you know i'm i i, I like my macbook air you know yeah yeah i understand that. well again thanks for your all the time um i'm sure we'll we'll chat again soon maybe we'll okay. buy some notes from you before too long if you're unloading a few yeah, and that's what I am. I'm re I've, I've, I've improved them as well as I can. It's time for them to go for people that just want, you know, like I said, just want a 12% return and, you know, not sweat it. They're all, all those loans are deep in the money. There's, you know, they're probably 40% loan to value, some nice. even less. Um, but I can go, you know, I can go finance some medical procedures. So. Gotcha. All right. I'll, I'll be in touch for sure. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's probably a good spot for us to finish. And so I'm going to I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to thank you all for being here. Um, you can find the YouTube page at Steve. That's just simply my name, Steve Hodgdon, H-O-D-G-D-O-N. And it's Steve at modernassetmanagement.com. And happy to talk to any of you offline. All right. So you take care. And we'll talk to you soon.